How you all doing? You guys are looking good today. Um, so glad that you are with us. Uh, if you're watching online as well, thank you for tuning in. Now, today we are starting a brand new series called Be Generous. Everyone help me out here. Be Generous. Now, uh, this is going to be a two-week series. Uh, today, we're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about uh, financial. And next week, we're going to talk about time, how it is so important for you to be generous with your time. Okay? So basically, what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to give you the most basic principle of giving if you call yourself a Christian if you call yourself a follower of Jesus here's the most basic principle of giving that you should know about okay and we will talk about tithe as well how many of you heard the term tithe before tithe is just meaning 10 one ten or 10 percent okay but also we're going to learn something about tithe that you, you some of you might not heard it before and of course again this is only for those of you who call yourself christian this is all if you call yourself a follower of christ you need to apply it but if you're not a follower of christ you know you, you you're, you're off the hook you don't have to do anything just enjoy the message sit down you know and, and you don't have to do any of this now here's the plan for us okay uh, everybody have a dime when you walk in now does anyone have a, everybody receive a dime right does any one of you haven't received a dime yet? Okay, everybody received a dime. And all of you have this envelope with you? Now, if you don't have the envelope, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, my friend Andy going to give it to you. So, a couple people. All right. So, uh, that dime that you receive is represent the one ten or 10% or, 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 or the tithe. Okay? Now, all right, I want you to be relaxed. Don't get nervous. There's not going to be any second offering. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to empty out your wallet, you know, before and put it in the envelope. Those things are for you to keep, the envelope and the dime for you to keep, okay? So you don't have to worry about, you know, pretend that you're going to go to the bathroom. Some people, when the offering start, they go to the bathroom, you know, and then you got to leave early. So, so don't worry. Relax, relax, okay? Uh, I don't have to ask my friend Andy there to lock the door also. So anyway, um relax and, and I'm not gonna make you feel guilty as well because you know sometimes you know and when we preach about giving you feel guilty I don't want you to feel guilty okay I don't want you to feel like man I should have stay home today I should have just sleep in instead of going to church I don't want you to feel any any of that because what I'm gonna do today is very simple it's just I'm just gonna explain it to you the most basic principle in giving if you call yourself Christian okay I'm gonna give you the foundation give you the understanding and explanation and then after that we do a couple of illustration as you see here I have some visual aids and then uh, I will actually let you know how much me and my wife make as a couple how much we give and how how, how do we give how how do we give so and then after that I want to offer you some solution how it's gonna make it easier for you to give we have some tools uh, we have some ways that we are created as a church they're gonna make it easier for you to keep track of your giving and it's easier it's gonna be easier for you to give to God not only give but giving to God in a way that honor God okay sounds like a plan right so again this is gonna be the most guilt-free uh, sermon in giving that you ever gonna hear okay this is gonna be the happiest uh, message in giving that you ever gonna hear if you're not happy I'm just gonna be happy all by myself okay now many people ask many people ask why do we talk about money in the church why do we talk about money I mean we gotta admit it there, there, there's probably a couple of things that drive people away from the church right first uh, maybe they think that we are a hypocrite Christian but the, the second thing is probably about the money People say, oh, all you talk about is just money, 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 you know. The church just want my money. The pastor just want my money. God just want my money, right? I mean, look at that, you know. Um, the pastor probably taking the money home in the, from, from the back door of the church in the brown paper bag, you know. But, uh, I mean, it's, this, we, we, the church is just talking about, people are suspicious toward God. People are suspicious toward the church, okay. Now, I got to tell you honestly, I cannot really blame those people. I cannot really blame them. Why? Because sometimes people like me, I mean the preacher, we, I said sometimes, not all the church, not all the preacher, I said some of them, uh, we abuse the scripture. We misuse the scripture. And we treat it, this whole giving to God thing is like a magic. It's like a formula, right? And we started to promise people the most ridiculous thing that you ever hear that is not based on the Bible. And we just abuse the scripture that forced people to give. Okay? Now, 
So you hear something like that. Well, if you give $100, you will get $10,000. Well, he is able to give you $10,000. He might give you $10,000. He probably did in the past. And I'm sure he will do it in the future. But what's bad is when you start treating God like a vending machine. You know, you put in your money and you expect something come out right away. So that's what's bad, okay? I heard, I heard uh, uh, about... about I heard a story uh, of this preacher on TV. He was asking the audience for money. He's like, he's like, how much do you make now? Okay, if you make $20,000 a year, if you make $30,000, how much is your dream salary? If your dream salary is $100,000 a year, go ahead, give 10% out of your dream salary. If you have a dream salary of $500,000 a year, go ahead and give tithe or one-tenth of your dream salary. And that's not even the worst part. That preacher says that, you know, when you do that, you know, what's, you know what you're doing? You are putting a hook on God's mouth. So God, we can force God to bless us. We can just, you know, God cannot do anything else. He has to bless us and we can just force him to bless us. Now, aren't you afraid that this building is going to collapse when I quoted that thing, right? I mean, that's scary, isn't it? How people just... You know, play this thing with just like magic and formula. You know, I was so mad. I was going to break my TV. But I realized that's the only, that's the only TV that I have at home. So I, don't, I didn't break it. So, you know, don't make this whole thing like a formula. Don't make this whole thing like a magic, okay? Because when you give to God, that's not formula. That's not magic. God, yes, God can bless you. But He can bless you in so many ways. Okay? And then you have a preacher that's really good at making you feel guilty, Right? Some of the people that is really good at making you feel guilty, right? I mean, hey, we got to feed these children in this country, in that country, you know. I mean, hey, look at the roof in the church. It's, it's, it's leaking, you know, when it's raining, the water dripping from the roof of our church. Do you guys know that that water, that dripping represent God's tears, you know? And you go, oh, okay, 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 I'm just going to, you know, fix the roof, or, you know. I don't want to make God cry, right? You, you make you feel guilty when you don't give. And then you have, a, you have someone who, who, who make you scared to death if you don't give, right? Well, if you don't give, you are robbing God. Well, if you don't tithe, you are robbing God. And I know we have some God robbers in this place today. <laughs> Praise God. So why do we talk about money in the church? Oops. Why do we talk about money in the church? Here's one of the reasons. Because Jesus talked about money. Because Jesus talked about money. I think that's enough reason for us to talk about money. And Jesus says, the number one competitor for your heart, the number one competitor for God to win over your heart, is not the devil, but it's money. In other words, that your heart never struggle with, is it the devil is it, or is it God? Your heart never struggles. Okay, is this a little guy with this white shirt or this little guy with this red shirt on my left? Which one is it? Is it Halloween or is it Christmas? Your heart never struggles with the devil and the God. But your heart always struggles with, is it money or is it God? The number one enemy, the number one competitor for God to win over your heart is money. And here, here's the bottom line before we get into the scripture, okay? Here's, the, here's what I want you to know. That God doesn't want something for you, from you. God wants something for you. Let me repeat that. God doesn't want something from you. He doesn't need anything from you. God wants something for you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless his children. Just like one day, if some of you have children, then, you, you know, you love to bless your children. You know, it's an honor for you to bless your children. You will do it happily. That's how God wants to bless you. He, he wants to bless you and He wants to do it happily. Okay? And God invites us to this blessed life by teaching us how we need to trust Him as the source of our blessing. And if we say that we trust, yes, God, I trust you as my source of blessing, then we need to do what He teaches us. We need to follow his principle, especially when it comes to principle of giving that he teaches. 
So I want you to take this, I, I want to take you to this Old Testament passage. Uh, you know, this is how we can give in a way that honor God. We're going to look at, open with me in Exodus 13. We're going to start from verse 1. Exodus 13, verse 1. Dedicate to me, meaning that set it apart for me, every firstborn. Everybody says every firstborn. Among the Israels. The first offspring to be born, both humans and animals, belong to me. So you got to set it apart every firstborn because that's belong to God. And verse 12. You must present all firstborn. Everybody say firstborn. You must present all firstborn son and firstborn male animals to the Lord for they belong to him or belong to God. So, so let me just explain it to you what, what this means, okay? If you're a rancher, okay, you own, uh, you own a ship, right? If you have a ship and then, um, uh, or, or ships, um, you know, and then that ship gave birth to this baby lamb, okay? The firstborn, you have to give God as an offering, the first one that was born from your ship, the baby lamb, the first baby lamb, you have to give it to God as an offering, okay? In other words, that God never, God never asked you to, okay, wait, um, wait until you have 10 and then you give one to me. The amount is the same, you give one, whether it's the first or later, but the one that honor God is, has to be the first one. In other words, God is saying that if you trust me with this firstborn and you offer it to me, the rest of your lamb will be blessed. Okay? Now, um, look at Exodus 23, verse 19 with me. And this is how God is telling Moses, tell my people how they can honor me with their wealth. As you harvest your crops, bring the very best of the first harvest to the house of the Lord your God. And there you go again. Before, if you are a rancher and you have the firstborn lamb, you, get, you have to give God as an offering. Now, if you are a farmer, the first day of your harvest, you have to give it to God as an offering. So, in other words, this is, if, let's say you have a cornfield, okay? Let's say you, you are a corn farmer, okay? And, and, and on the very first day of your harvest, you could have bring your harvest to the market, and you could sell it with the high price. Because why? Because in the market, I bet in, in, during the first day of the harvest, not a lot of people sell corn. That's why you can sell your corn with the high price. You guys got that so far? Now, now if, if you wait a month later, you go to the market, everybody sells corn, and, and they're, not gonna, they got, they're not gonna value your corn with the high price. But God is telling you, you know, trust me, I know that you can make a lot of money if you bring your first harvest to the market, but give it to me as an offering. This is your first and your best offering. Trust me with it, and I will bless the rest of your crops. Okay, that's how it works. Now, I heard a story about when the first time uh, uh, Xbox 360 came out. You know, uh, Xbox usually goes for $200, $300, right? I mean, you have this long line. You have, you have this crowd that's waiting to purchase the Xbox in the first day they came out. I mean, I heard in, in one place, I'm not sure which, well, where, where was it, but, but they called the National Guards, okay, the National Guard to control the crowd because it was so long, the, the, so many people and the, long, the line was so long. And, and I bet on that first day, the, all, the, um, all the Xbox is sold out everywhere. You couldn't find it. And I actually heard there's this one Xbox you, what, what happened, the people who get the Xbox, who, who got a chance to purchase Xbox, they resell it. They put it on eBay and they resell it. You know how much? For $15,100. See, you value your stuff on the first day. You know, people want to have it. People want, you know, they cannot, and you know, and this principle, if you are a farmer, I know that you can make a lot of money by, by selling your first harvest, but God says, Give it to me. Give it as an offering for me and I will bless the rest of the crops. This is the way you honor God. By bringing your first and your best. You know, don't wait until you have a lot, but bring, this is like a, a, a step of faith. Okay? Now, I want to take you back to 1500 years, almost 2000 years before God says this to Moses. 
Okay? Adam and Eve, they had many children. And two of their many children named Abel and Cain. And this is what it says. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crop as a gift to the Lord. So Cain was a farmer. He presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord, as an offering to the Lord. Abel, his brother, also brought a gift. Abel is a, a rancher. The best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. So here you have Cain as a farmer. He just gave offering to God some of his crops. But you have Abel who, who, who gave the best of the firstborn. And guess what happened? The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. Because what Cain gave to God is not the first and is not the best. Okay, but Abel, Abel with, with his faith, he gave the first and his best. So that's why God accepted Abel offering, but not, didn't accept Cain offering. Leviticus 27 verse 30, it says this. One ten or tithe of the produce of the land, whether grain from the field or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart to Him as holy. So one ten of your first has to be set apart for God, has to be gift, uh, given to God and, and it, because it belongs to Him. Okay, so the, here we go. You, you, you find it. You know, so this is not about the Old Testament thing. You know, isn't this Old Testament? But we are now in the New Testament. We are we're not under the law. We, we are under grace because we, we are with Jesus, you know. We, this is not about the law. This is not about the Old Testament. What happened to Cain and Abel is like 2,000 years before God gave, before God gave the law to the people of Israel. So it, was, it happened 2,000 years before the law even given. Okay? And this is what Jesus says. What sorrows await you, teacher of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are careful to tithe even to the tiniest income from your herbs garden, but you ignore the most important aspect of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Now, Jesus was really upset with this religious leader, with this Pharisee, He's like, I know that you tithe. I know that you're really good at tithing, giving away your, your money. But you ignore the more important thing, justice, mercy, and faith. Okay? But this is what Jesus says to them. You should tithe. Yes. But do not neglect. Pay attention here, guys. Do not neglect the more important things. Okay? I mean... There, there, there are more important things than, 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 than tithing, you know, mercy, justice, and faith. There are more important things. But should you tithe? Jesus said yes. Jesus never says, say, okay, don't worry about tithing because they're not, it's not as important as mercy, faith, and justice. Jesus never says that. There are more important things, mercy, justice, and faith. But should you tithe? Yes, Jesus says. So there you go. You have your Old Testament say it. A New Testament say, Jesus said, you know, um, the law says, um, 2,000 years before the law was given to Moses, God has already given us the example on how you can give. Here's the principle of giving. So that's, that's all the scripture reading. Now, now this is time for the application part. But the bottom line is this. The most basic principle of giving is the first and the best 10%. The first and the best 10% belongs to God. Well, again, if you follow Jesus, you need to apply it. If you're not a follower of Jesus, you are free. You don't have to do anything. This is an invitation to a blessed life. This is the most basic principle of giving. The first and the best 10%. Now, again, this is the application part, okay? Here's something that I want you to do. I know it's going to be a little bit inconvenient. I know that you probably have to change your habit in giving. But, you know, I, I, but I, here, here's what I think. Okay, I'm sure you don't mind to be inconvenienced if you know that you're going to be blessed. If I said, hey, can you come over to my house? I want to bless you. I mean, you don't mind walking a couple of blocks. You don't mind walking uh, in the cold. You know, you don't mind spare your time to come over to my house because you know that you're going to be blessed. 
okay so this is God's principle this is the way that he gonna bless his children even if it's a little bit inconvenience even if you need to develop a new habit I think you should do it and I want to invite you to do it because I've been doing it okay here's the application part we're gonna start from this one dollar bill there are ten of them it's ten dollars right so can I get a volunteer can I can, can I get you as a volunteer here? okay uh, come over here so I can see okay there are ten of them okay let's say now how much is the tide how much is ten percent from the ten dollars a dollar right let's say you get your allowance from your parents ten dollar every day or ten dollar every week let's say you get a gift for your birthday ten dollars okay let's say you know it's your birthday and someone give you ten dollar as a gift okay ten dollars and you know that 10% of $10 is a dollar, right? So if I give it to you, can I, can I see your hands? If I give it to you, one, two, just open up your hands so I can, I can put it real quick. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let me ask you this. Which one is the first and the best 10%? The first one that hit your hands, that's the first 10%. Okay, now I know some of you, stay here, okay. Uh, I know some of you are going to start asking questions, well, what if it's a gift card? Well, what if it's a $10 bill, you know? But th that's not the point. Th this is the point, okay. The first and the best 10%, it means this, okay. Before you buy, you know, Starbucks, before you, you, you treat your friend for a cup of coffee or a soda, before you buy anything else, before you use it for other things, you need to set it, before you buy video games or you save, you need to set apart what the first and the best for God. That's, that's, what, that's what this principle, the first and the best 10% belongs to God. If you, if you use it for everything else, uh, you, you're spending for your coffee, for your soda, and then you get a dollar left, this is not the first and the best 10%. This is a leftover 10%. Let me do it with the $10 bill, okay? Maybe it's more interested with the $10 bill. So, 10 $10 bill, how much is it? I know it's math, I know it's hard. Okay, how much is it? 100, okay. Uh, how much is 10%? $10, okay. Let's say you get paid $100 a week. Let's say it's your birthday gift and someone gives you $100. Or, or, or you just walk down the hall, I, I, you know, I just gave you $100 for no reason. Okay. Let's say it happened to you, okay? Remember the principle, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Which one is the first again? The first and the best? The first one that hits your hands, right? Right? Okay, thank you. The first one that hits your hands. So that's the principle. Before you go out for dinner, before you pay the bill, right? Before you set it aside for saving, you got to set it aside the first and the best 10% for God. That's the principle of tithing. It's not only 10%, but it has to be the first and the best 10%. You know, let's say you get paid by checks, okay? $1,000 a week. You know, and every time you receive a check for $1,000, how much is the 10%? 100, right? We know what you do when you get paid with a check, you deposit your check to the bank. But before you pay, before you pay your rent, before you pay, you pay your bill, before you go out for dinner, you know, you set it aside a hundred dollars as your first and your best ten percent. Or you can, what you do is, uh, I don't know, if you, uh, it used to be there's a thing called check. I don't know if you, some of you are too young to know. There's this check, or you can just set it aside hundred dollars and you write a check and this is my first and my best ten percent okay before you buy some food before you you treat your friend before you buy your girlfriend a t-shirt they say my boyfriend is awesome or whatever you know you set it apart for God ten percent your first and your best ten percent now your tithe 
Your tithe goes to the local church. Okay? If you don't go to church here, if you're only visiting here, don't give here. But your tithe should go to local church where you go each and every week. It's, it doesn't go to the institution. It doesn't go to the hospital. It doesn't go to the foundation. And, and again, the tithe is the money that you make. Okay, uh, you know, I'm just going to try to give you many examples. Like, like, for example, my wife, you know, if someone is getting married in this church, usually they, they, they come to my wife and they say, hey, can you make the, the room looks pretty? Can you make the sanctuary looks pretty? Put flower here, put flowers there, you know, put the tablecloth and this color and that color. And that couple, will, will the, the couple that's going to get married is going to, like, can you just buy stuff in the store and then I will replace your money? If my wife go to the store and spend $300 on flowers and all of that thing and then give the receipt to this couple and the couple reimburse or replace the $300, you don't have to tithe for that because you don't make money. You don't make profit out of that. You, you, you understand what I'm saying, right? But and then after the wedding is over, my wife will come to them, hey, my service fee is $100, my service fee is $200. Then you make a profit from that. That's when you have to tithe. You know, that's, that's you, you guys, you know, the, the, the simplest uh, example is like if your friends owe you $10. Hey, can I borrow $10? And you give it to him, $10. And then the very next week, he, he pay you back with $10. You don't have to tithe for that because it's your money. Right? You guys understand that, right? See, if you get a, th- uh, if you get $100, you paid, if you get $100, okay, you paid your bill, you go out and eat, you treat your friend, you know, you pay your cell phone bill, and you, you use it for everything else, and then you have $10 left. This is 10% of $100, but this is a leftover 10%. This is not the first and the best 10%. Now, here's the question. Well, the first and the best, $10, the first and the best 10%, who do you give it to? When you receive money and you give it to T-Mobile or you give it to Starbucks, remember... That's your first and your best 10% and Starbucks and T-Mobile, they don't have the power to bless you. Make sure you give to someone who has the power to bless your life. Now, why God couldn't take Abel, uh, couldn't take Cain offering and all of that? Because it's just the character of God. Even if you want to make him second, he cannot be second because he has to be first. God has to be the first. God has to be the most high. Even if you want to put him second, he cannot be second. Even if he want to take that offering, he cannot because he has to be first. So again, I know this is, you know, um, inconvenience. I, I know this is uh, take a lot to, to develop a new habit. Now, now, I want you to know this, okay? God. It's not a legalistic God. You know what legalistic is? You know, it means that if, let's say if I get $100, okay, I deposit it in my bank, and then my wife didn't know anything about it, and then she bought lunch with that money, uh, you know, and, and, you know, God is, I mean, I'm not going to like, okay, baby, that's good. I mean, you just give our first and best to Wendy's, and uh, now we're cursed, okay? No, it's not like that, okay? If you forget, if it's happened by accident, you know, it's God. Knows, but this is the basic, basic, this is the bottom line of every principle of tithing. It has to be the first and the best. It's a little bit inconvenient, but you have to develop this habit. Me and my wife, we've been doing this for a year. Because before, I didn't know this principle. And since I know this principle, we've been doing this. We've been trying very hard to do this. And and, and thank God we're able to do it. Before, you know, I, 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 I tithe. I, I give tithing since I became a Christian eight years ago. I keep tithing, but sometimes, you know, I will use all my paycheck. And then I said, okay, guys, I, I, will, I will pay you back when I get my next paycheck. So the next paycheck, I give 20%. So that's not tithing. That's not tithing. You're like, okay, God, I owe you this week, but next week when I get paid, I'll, I'll replace that, what I owe. That's not tithing. Tithing has to be the first and the best 10%. Okay? So a couple last things. That I want to show it to you. Now, here's how much me and my wife make as a couple. This is how much we give, and this is how we give. Hopefully, it will help. This is not, this is not bragging time. I'm sure some of you make a lot more money than me, um, you know, our combined income. This is not bragging time. This is, I just want to set an example. And I'm not, I never ask you to do something 
that I don't do myself. I know I'm, I have to set an example. Okay? So I make about $2,200 a month. $2,200 before tax. Okay? And some people ask, do you tithe before tax or after tax? You know, whatever. You know, uh, I'm just, I just feel blessed. I just, God is good. So I tax before tax. My gross income. I, I just, I mean, I, I, I tithe before tax. Okay? And my wife make about $2,400 a month. But she gets paid bi-weekly every two weeks. So $1,200. Every time she gets a paycheck, she gets $1,200. Okay, this is before tax. Here are some tools that we are created as a church that we've been using that, that it's going to make your life a lot easier. Now, I, I don't know. if Are we ready to, to, to use this website here? Can we use the website here? No? Okay, there you go. If you go, this is what I've been doing in the past one year. I mean, I thank God for this technology guy that, that created our website. This make it easier for me to give my first and my best 10%. Okay? Um, just just uh, go from the top. You click bethanyphilly.org, and it will take you to our website. And then you just click on giving. Okay? Click on giving, and then it will take you to the bottom page, and you just hit donate. Click on donate. And what, what it's going to take you, it's going to take you to our PayPal account. This is the church PayPal account, okay? The, our financial team has access to it. And then if you ever have a question about your giving, you can always ask us for the report because we have, our, we have open financial in this church. If you want to know where your money go, if you know what we use it as a church, you just use it. I mean, you just ask from us, okay? Now, here's a couple of things that you can do, okay? If you don't have a PayPal account, you put in the amount, you put in the amount on the top as your first and your best tithing, and then you just pay with your credit card or your checking card, and you don't have to have PayPal account. But if you do have a PayPal account like, like I do, you know, uh, maybe, can we log in? Yeah? Okay. And just log in to that PayPal account and put in the amount, let's say put in, a, you know, 50 Again, this is going to make your life so much easier. But if you don't have any checking card or, or, or any, any credit card, don't worry about it. Because I have also think about for those, I also think of the people who don't have it, how you can give the first and the best. So what I do is I will deposit my check, okay, and I will go home and I go online and I, I just give my first and my best 10%. So that's, now, there's a special inst instruction on the bottom there to the receipt uh, on the left, uh, special instruction on the bottom, there you go. If you click, it will give you a column. You can just, you know, Sam's uh, tithe uh, or, or, or Nate's tithe or whatever, Ryan's tithe, okay? And then you can give, put the amount, um, and then you have to put your checking card and everything, and then you hit donate. But if you, um, if you know when you're going to get paid, if you get paid at the same time every single month or every single week, you can go to the top, and you can click on recurring. And this is going to take your, the money you know, from your account automatically, okay? So, again, I deposited my check, and I give, every time I get a paycheck, for $220 as my tithe. My wife will get his or her paycheck, and we give $120 every two weeks for her tithe, okay? Now, again, you know, again, if you have a PayPal, if you want to make a PayPal, pay, PayPal account, it's fine. If you don't want to make it, you don't have to, uh, but, but here's the thing, okay? Don't Use your credit card and then you get in debt because you give your 10%. Okay? That's not what God's want. Okay? You make sure if you use your credit card, you, you, you have to be able to pay it right away. Now, as a couple, as a couple, we make 4600 a month. And we give our tithe $460 a month. Do you guys know that I don't even pray for it? My, we... we we don't even pray for it. We don't, we, we don't even discuss it. We don't even question it. As soon as we receive, we give. As soon as we receive, we give. Because we understand that principle. As soon as we give, we receive. I mean, as soon as we receive, we give. 
Now, this is just something out of context. You know, for those of you who are single, this is a, a marriage tips, okay? One day if you have, if you get married, okay, and if well, your wife asks you, hey, baby, do I look pretty? You know, when you ask that kind, when you hear that kind of question, this is what you got to do. Hey, baby, do I look pretty? Yes. You know, because if you hesitated, if you go, uh, you're going to be in trouble, okay? <laughs> hey, baby, do I look fat? No. Hey, baby, do I look fat? No. You know, before she even finished the question, you got to answer it. It's going to save you a lot of troubles, okay? So this is what tithing is like. You, re- you receive, you just give. You receive, you just give. You have to do it with faith. You don't think that, is it going to be enough for me? Is it going to be enough for me? It's your first and your best 10%. Again, like I said, I, this is not about bragging time, you know. And me and my wife, we committed to give on top of our tithing $50 a week. $50 a week. So it'll, our total giving in a month is about $660 a month. That's about 18% of our income. Okay? And we're not planning to give any less in the future. We are planning to keep increasing our giving. And some of you say that, you know, you can make a car payment for it. You can, you can make a house payment with, with that $660 a month. Hey, you know, I'm just looking at this as like a blessing from God. I'm just looking at this like, hey, everything that I own is God. I get to keep 90 and see he only asks for 10. So, and here's another reason that, I, that, that me and my wife, we are so committed in giving. Because in the past, financially, I was so messed up. And I need God's grace to help me out to get back up with my financial. So in the middle of all of that, I feel blessed. And we are not planning to slow down in giving. So I hope it's going to set example for you. And again, you know, I don't do this to brag because I know some of you make way, way, way more money than me. And here's what the envelope for, okay? Bear with me. This envelope is for you to keep. Let's say you get allowance, you get paid or whatever. You know, I used to be a waiter when I take home different amount of money every day. I get cash. This is what you do. Let's say if you make $100 and you take home, you make $100 as a waiter or, or you know, as, uh, you know, and, and then you go home and you set it apart $10 and you put it in the envelope. So you don't have to go to the church, bang on the church door. I want to give my tithe. I want to give my tithe, you know, because the church is not open 24-7. So you can set it apart, and what you do is, throughout the week, all the tithe that you set it apart, and then on Saturday night, you can just take the money out, and you bring it on Sunday morning as your tithe. That's your first and your best tithe. Now, if you don't understand, you can come up to me after the service. Uh, I think we're running out of time, but here's, uh, a, here's the promise of God for you. Honor the Lord... Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your fats will brim over with new one. God's blessing will be overflow. Okay? And the prophet of Malachi says that bring all the tithe into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the window for heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take in. The try it. Put me on the test. Okay? Now, I, I prepared an illustration for you. It's too bad a few people have laughed, but I want to do it anyway, just to make fun, uh, just to have fun. Okay? Today, uh, Judah, if I can get your help. You receive a dime when you come in, right? Can I see your dime? All right, come here, Judah, so we don't make a mess, okay? You receive a dime. This is represent your tithe, okay? Just hang on to it so tight that you, you're not going to give it to me. Just like this, okay? When God asks, you're not going to give it to him, okay? You hang on to that, your tithe. And what happens is when God is trying to bless you, okay? When God is trying to bless you, you're not going to get so much. Because you keep hanging on to it too tight. When God is trying to bless you, you know, you you don't have any. But when you open up your hand, open up your hand, okay? When God trying to bless you, look at that. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Just put it, give it up. 
God will bless you again. Open for it. Give it out again. That's how God's going to bless you, okay? And this is not speaking about money. This is not speaking only about money. This is speaking about favor, healing, miracle in your life, your joy, okay? God's blessing is so much more than money. And if you trust Him with your first and 10%, you will be blessed. All right, let's everybody stand up. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you, God. Give us the courage to give what you teach us, the first and the best 10%. And we believe it with faith that you will bless us. Your blessing will be overflow in our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you.